be forever young? Well, for the relatively small price of $8,000, you might be able to. The secret to reversing some effects of aging might be in the blood of the young. Three new studies have found that blood from young mice can reverse symptoms of aging in older mice. Three studies will be published this week in the journal Science and Nature, each exploring the regenerative properties of young blood. The blood of the young can make the old young again. Are you kidding me? It sounds like out of a sci-fi movie or something. Um, so what is it in the blood? Do we know? Peter Thiel here, a member of the PayPal Mafia, it's called. He's 48 years old, yet plans to live forever, 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 forever. The process is called parabiosis. And there's a company called Ambrosia that is openly raising money to bring it to market. Parabiosis is a process of taking a young person's blood and putting it into your veins, into your cardiovascular system to rejuvenate your body with the essence of the young. What it really is is modern vampirism. It's, um, it's, a, it's a process of where you interchange blood. Like we, they've shown it in mice, if you take young... Electrophoresis? No, or, uh, uh, something like that. Yeah, um, para, parabiosis. Okay. Parabiosis is where you interconnect the blood vessels between a young mouse and an old mouse and you suddenly find, after they're exchanging blood back and forth all the time, the old mice get younger. Wow. Okay, well, I believe this is because the young mice is providing the old mouse cells that have long telomeres. Okay, so it comes, comes back to the telomeres. I'm, I'm hoping that we can do the same thing by just lengthening the telomeres in the cells you already have. But he's now doing this kind of clinical study with humans. A Russian scientist claims to have created his own version of the fountain of youth. He says, when perfected, all you have to do is pop a pill to stay as youthful as you want. The medicine is currently undergoing tests, but could be on sale within a few years. RT's Natalia Novikova has been finding out more. It looks complicated, and it is. It's almost a life's work for Vladimir Skolachev. Two more years of testing, and the doctor thinks he will have finally cracked the enigma of aging. Let's get the science over with now. Apparently, it's all about how oxygen reacts in your body. 99% of the time it turns into harmless water, but there's that 1% that turns into superoxide that later turns into very poisonous elements. So the task was to find an antioxidant that stops that process. And we're really here to talk about not only anti-aging, but the concept of immortality. Tell me about the research you're doing. I know you're a big researcher in the biological arena, and some of the concerns we have about telomeres and how we can maybe alter or maybe extend the quality and the length of life. Well, first let me say that, that immortality is a big thing. To, to be, become immortal, that's going to be, take more than just curing our aging process. We're going to have to figure out ways of uploading our brains to computers and things like that when we get run over by trucks and <laughs> stuff like that. So, so <laughs> aging isn't going to make us immortal. Aging is just going to, the curing the aging is just going to make us live healthy longer, but we can still be hit by meteorites and things like that. So uh, we got to do a lot more than just that. But, but the thing that I'm focused on is definitely trying to uh, find a way to lengthen our telomeres. Telomeres have been shown to be uh, the clock that ticks inside of all of our cells that control the aging process. And we know that because we've lengthened them. T telomeres are the very tips of our chromosomes. <clears throat> uh, you can think of a shoelace chromosome is a shoelace, and the caps on your shoelaces are equivalent to the telomeres on our chromosomes. When shoelace gets, when the caps on the shoelaces get worn away, your shoelace falls apart. Same is true with our chromosomes. So keeping the telomeres long is what we're trying to do. And we have found that by lengthening the telomeres, we've now actually been able to turn old mice into young mice. And that's not just making them more energetic, like a lot of products you hear about that increase energy level, they've reversed aging. But Mice got reversed in their aging in every way imaginable. They looked younger, they <clears throat> ran around like they were younger, they could breed again. One thing we showed when I was at T Geron Corporation, where we first discovered that astragalus root contains TA65 and such, one of the things we did there is we showed that when you keep telomeres long, you increase healing. Wound healing occurs. We would do things, experiments like we'd grow uh, artificial skin in a, in a petri dish, and then we'd take a nail and scratch through it, creating a wound, 
and then we watched to see how fast that wound healed. And we found that the, telomer, the telomerase-treated cells, the length of the telomeres, healed at a much faster rate. I mean, at the P equals point zero 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 one level, I mean, it was so dramatically different. Uh, that uh, even telomeres long increases the healing process. So, Larry, you've been taking it for 18 months now, a year and a half. Uh, yeah. How does it feel? Uh, it feels good. I think the second year is better than the first. I feel better the last six months than I did the year before. I th think that the second year seems to be accumulating. And um, my joints, I don't worry about them in the gym anymore. And I have the energy to get through the day without crashing. And uh, I feel good, I have a positive outlook, and uh, I feel like I look good, and uh, my wife's looking good too, so it's been a great experience. There's the possibility that in the future, you could still talk to the people you love forever. If you upload the human mind into a computer, you could create a copy of yourself as an avatar. Now, your family might still be able to have conversations with you, even though you no longer exist in the material world anymore, but in digital space. In some sense, a part of you has become immortal. So clearly, we are entering a world where we can transcend space and time and even our own mortality. We discovered this enzyme telomerase to lengthen them. Well, after we showed that we could turn uh, old cells into young cells at that point, at, at, at the very initial stage. The next thing we did is we took the antisense of telomerase and showed that we could kill every cancer cell by causing it to die of accelerated aging. We, caused the, we inhibited the telomerase to cause the telomeres to get really short at an accelerated rate, and the cancer cells died, and it had no effect on normal cells. Wow. Because normal cells don't have telomerase. Right. Well, everybody said, wow, if inhibiting telomerase kills cancer, then telomerase must be the cause of the cancer. Oh. But it's the exact opposite. We now know hundreds and hundreds of scientific publications showing that um, it's the lack of telomerase that causes cancer. It's short telomeres that cause cancer. Keeping, telom keeping your telomeres long by keeping telomerase being produced actually decreases our risk of cancer. It turns out that we know what aging is. Aging is the buildup of error. That's all aging is, the buildup of genetic and cellular error. As cells begin to age, they begin to get sluggish because genetic mistakes start to build up. Now, cells, however, have a repair mechanism. They can repair damage to their cells. Otherwise, we would all basically rot uh, very soon after birth. However, even the repair mechanisms eventually get gummed up, and then the cell really starts to get old as a consequence. So then the question is, can you accelerate cell repair? That is another branch of gerontology which is being looked at, using genes and using chemicals to accelerate the repair mechanism. For example, if I take any organism on the planet Earth, from yeast cells to spiders, insects, rabbits, dogs, and even monkeys now, and I reduce their caloric intake by 30%, they live 30% longer. In fact, the only organism which has not yet been deliberately tested by scientists are Homo sapiens. All the other species obey this basic rule. You starve them to death, they live longer. This is independent of telomerase. This is a function of the wear and tear that we have on the cells. And this is the only known way of actually deliberately extending the lifespan of any organisms almost at will. Now, what we want is a genetic way of mimicking this mechanism without having to starve yourself. Because how many people do you know would be willing to starve themselves in order to live 30% longer? Not too many. So then the question is, are there genes that control this process? And the answer is apparently yes. There's something called the sirtuin genes, SIR2 being the most prominent of them. They in turn stimulate certain enzymes, among them resveratrol, which is found in red wine, for example. What I am saying is, we are now finding pieces of the fountain of youth, tantalizing clues that mean that perhaps in the coming decades, we might be able to actually unravel the aging process. 
When I first heard the word transhumanism, like a lot of people, I was a little overwhelmed. Was this science even possible? Or was it just science fiction? It was immediately clear that if this technology were, in fact, real, these developments might lend themselves as an aid to humanity in the ceaseless battle for health and long life, but on the other hand, something in my gut sensed that there could be another side to all of this. When something appears too good to be true, it often is. So questions formed in my mind. What were the moral implications of becoming something other than Homo sapiens sapien, humans, what we are today. Would we be human at all if the agenda of these scientists were met? Well, I decided to investigate the issue, and I started reaching out to experts on all sides of the movement, and I was surprised by what some of them had to say. Transhumanism is basically a worldview developed by those who want to consider living longer and applying the skilled sciences and emerging technologies and bringing this about through principled values and ethics. Transhumanism as a philosophical point of view is a codified philosophy that pretty much does the same thing. As a philosophy it is seeking knowledge and truth about ways we can look at improving the human condition, extending life, improving our environmental situations, our transportation, communication, ways we can work as a species to better enrich and protect and sustain our species. As a worldview, it's based on the enthusiasm and proactivity of people throughout the world who want to put good use to the sciences and technologies that are emerging. Therefore, it has become a worldview. Transhumanism is a utopian and a neo-eugenic social movement. Uh, that presumes that it will be able to create a post-human species uh, for the betterment of humankind. I think there are four primary elements to the movement. Number one might be called radical self-design. That is, uh, turning uh, myself, if I want to, into a purple and plaid entity with wings. Uh, the second would be immortality, the, the idea that uh, somehow we could uh, recreate our biology so that we can live hundreds of years if not uh, become immortal. The third is a procreative redesign, that is presuming the right to create our progeny to suit our needs in the future, what we think would be a better human being, uh, either for them perhaps, but also mainly for us. For example, the person who's a frustrated musician trying to redesign his uh, embryo so that uh, when the child grows up uh, they can be Beethoven. And I think the fourth is kind of a neo-deity project, the idea that we can become gods. 